Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. The name, the name above every name. The name in this hour more than ever. The name that's above every name. Oh, I'm telling you, Jesus, Jesus is going to be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. The whole earth will hear his name. The whole earth will know who he is. The whole earth, the whole earth. Hallelujah, the name, the name, the name above every name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Kola haya taya, hura haya shoda, hakaya nuna mashira barida day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. The name, oh, the precious name that delivers, the precious name that heals, the precious name that saves. Hallelujah, 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 King Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Harabusha te mataka, Hatakuda bakisha te mato shere de de, Huda baham my maru shere de 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 de. Hallelujah! 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 Jesus! 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 Arise, my church! This is the time that I have called you to. Each one of you has a part to play in this time. Each one of you is important and intricate in my plan. Arise, my church, and do not let this darkness overtake you. For you are my children, and I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Arise and do what I have called you to do. For the time is short, and there are many who need me. Arise, my church, for the time is coming that the darkness will overtake, and you must be prepared. You must be prepared. You must be strong in who you are in me. Do not look to the right or to the left. Know that I am before you and around you. I will never leave you, but you must move. You must go forward, for the time is short. The time is short. I have called you for this time. Move on my behalf. Be my witnesses. Speak to the lost. Speak to the lost. For there are many who do not know me. There are many. There are many. And no one will go if you are not going to go. Mm. You must go. That's what you were called for. That's what this time is for. You must go. Thank you, Lord, for your word is good. It's a sure word. Father, we just thank you. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, Jesus. We don't normally um, do this like this, but um, this morning, I'm just going to call a few people up for prayer before we even get started because they need it. And it's sometimes we don't hear the word of the Lord until that thought gets cleared out of their head. And um, <laughs> so I'm going to just call a few people up. I'm going to call her up. If you want to just come up for me, I'm going to call Walter up. If you want to come with him too, Hillary, you can. You've never come up to the front, but you're not in the penalty box. You have? Okay, perfect. Praise the Lord. Sarah, I'm going to call you up too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to pray. Well, you're going to help me too, but <laughs> not just me.
not lit up yet. Lit Maybe up. I am. Oh, I am lit up. Oh, see? There we go. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, thank you. So last night, I go to bed late anyway. <laughs> The glory of the Lord is going to fall on his children like never before. You have not witnessed. You think you know, but you can't figure it out. No one can. That's why he's God. But when it falls, everyone will know. And when we step into that glory, until we get home to be with the Lord, it'll never depart from us. <laughs> In this hour, more than ever, those that are hungry for him, those that thirst for him, it's not an hour anymore for us to have our way. It's an hour in this time to do what the Lord has called, even when we're mature. <laughs> you. <clears throat> are going to be shaken by the power of God. You're going to have a tangible shakingness by the power of God. There's things in you, Walter, that you sit on, but you have a lot of wisdom. People need to hear what you have to say. So even though it seems like it's a little bit of a hiccup, that he's going. It's just a hiccup. It's not forever. Things don't remain the same ever. So, Father, I'm just going to pray. Lord, I thank you that in this hour, Lord God, that it seems like they can't be together. But, Father God, let no man separate what God has brought together. So it doesn't matter about the border. It doesn't matter about your American and your Canadian. Let no man separate what God has brought together. And Lord, I thank you that this is just going to be a temporary little bit of a hiccup. But I see when you guys come back together, it'll be shorter than what we think. And when you guys come back together, there's going to be a fire on the inside of you, too, like never before. Because in this hour, like never before, we have to trust in the Lord and not lean into our own understanding, which we've done for so long, because we know how to figure it out. Somebody has been there, done it. But in this hour, we've never been here before. <laughs> and we have to rely everything on him. So, Father, I thank you for protection. I thank you for the blood of Jesus, and I thank you for the favor of God. It's going to be a testimony. It's going to be a testimony. Everything that we go through is a testimony to the glory of the Lord. So, Father, we give you praise and honor for these two, for they're going to walk this out. And it'll seem like, oh, Nikki, it wasn't as bad as I thought. And, Father, we thank you for the union that they have together, that they're a great couple together, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Great man of God. Amen. I'm going to give you a hug before you. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you too, Walter. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Yeah, stick close to him. And now for you, my little one. <laughs> Lord, I thank you that you're creating new pathways into this brain of hers. That, Father God, all the things of old, all the way she used to think, every time she gets caught up into the same thing, it's a different scenario, but it brings her back into the same pathways. Father, you said that your word is a sure word and that renewing the mind, Lord, let us not be a reprobate mind where we are constantly bombarded by the same thoughts constantly, but we are renewing our mind day by day, and you're creating new pathways in her, Father God, that is good, for you are a good God. 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 <laughs> and Lord, I thank you. <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows about that. Can I say it out loud? Yeah. <laughs> I thank you, Father, that the seed that's grown on the inside of her, Father God, is leaping with joy, leaping with joy. Leap, it doesn't matter the time that we are living in. God's time is always good and perfect. <laughs> Father, I thank you for renewing her mind, that Lord God, as she studies the word, she doesn't get caught up into that old trap all the time. But Father God, you are renewing her day by day, causing her to think clearer, causing her, Father God, to be the child of God that you created her to be. She's here for a reason. She's here for a purpose. There's, there's greater things on the inside yet to be uncovered, Father God. And we thank you, Lord God, that this little one is also ready, 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 Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You're going to have to. It's okay. It's all good. They'll help you out after. And she has something going on here, Fred, like, like a tension, like like the muscle is not relaxing enough. <laughs> but before I start, <laughs> God just plucked you and dropped you here. And you're going, Lord, everything is changing around me. And I can hardly keep still. Well, what's going on? But I don't want to miss God. <laughs> Wherever you go, I'm going. It would, better, it would be better for me to be wrong and be with the Lord than for me to be right and not have the Lord with me. Although she's quiet, Lord, she's a warrior, she prays. Lord, I thank you that in this hour, Father God, that you're calling her to come up higher to come up higher, that she can dwell in that secret place of the Most High, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. That, Lord God, there's a place on the Almighty that we can abide and we can hear the voice of the Lord so clearly that in this hour, Father God, that we are hearing your voice. Your children know your voice and will listen to no other. Father, I thank you that in this day and hour we are listening to the voice of the Lord. And, Father, we just plead the blood we command healing to come into this body right now in Jesus' name. The healing power of God dwells on the inside of her. And Father God, I thank you that we release that power to go about and do what it needs to do, creating, Father God, comfort, 
and peace and release, Father God, into this area, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you, Father, are our healer. And we trust in that name, in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, that you are our healer, and we give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Fred, you probably would have something that you wanted to add to this. Hallelujah. I just want to say this to start off. Okay. Yes. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, I just thank you for the healing power of God. Father, you said you would take sickness out of our midst. You said by my stripes you are healed. Father, in Jesus' name, we just break the enemy's attack. That assignment, Father, we break its power. We loose, Father, right now the anointing. The healing power, Father, even now is flowing from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Every symptom, I command you to leave and I command you to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Body, I command you to respond. I command you to respond. I command you to take that power, receive that power. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go I'm, going to go on that I'm going to go on this way. <clears throat> okay, Father, in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Pain and discomfort, I command you to loose yourself. I command you to go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Loose her now. You line up now in Jesus' name. All pain, all discomfort, go. Looser now. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you. Okay. Glory to God. 
to God. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to... <laughs> One thing about... One thing about church, I'm not going to preach, trust me. I just wanted to do that, um, the confession, see? Can't even talk. <laughs> um, but before I do, um, I just wanted to kind of be like a Jamin for a second here. <laughs> Malachi says, right, it says, will a man rob God, yet you are robbing me, but you say, how have we robbed you in tithes and offerings? Everybody knows that. <clears throat> But I said to the Lord, you know, because the fear of God is something that needs to come back into the church. So, oh, put the mic up. You can't hear me. Sorry. And uh, so in Malachi in 16, if you go up a little bit more, it says, then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. And the Lord gave attention and he heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared the Lord and who esteemed his name. They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On that day that I prepare my own possessions, I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. So will you again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. And I thought, that's for us today. <laughs> In this hour, we have to make a distinction because that hour is here, that we have to know on what side of the fence are we serving the Lord. And... Uh, your money, which is really his money, really does speak a lot that way. And, um, and for myself, when I was a single mom, it was very hard because I came to the Lord as a single mom. And I had no money. <laughs> Nothing. And I had two kids, one of which is here and the other one living in the States, and, uh, and a car and worked at the hospital. And I worked part-time. So I was working part-time. I wasn't even full-time. And then I got to know Jesus. And all of a sudden, I got a revelation. Oh, I got to pay some tithes. Ooh. Okay, hold on here, because that's like grocery money for me. Because today, groceries, $100 gets you three things. But back then, $100 or something like that, it was, it was more, gives you like 15 bags, it seemed. <laughs> and... Uh, so that was a lot of money for me because that was like gas money and uh, it was checks back then. I know I seem very ancient. I feel like very ancient. We wrote checks back then, believe it or not, people. Um, yes, and I wrote it very, very, very slowly thinking that if I wrote it slow enough, somehow, I don't know, it would manifest in my bank account. <laughs> I don't know. And, uh, but it was very difficult for me but God showed me something when I was single that being married, I, you know, I see the fruits of it, but when I was single, I saw it. a great thing happen to me. When I gave that money, that people would say, hey, it's his, it belongs to his. Yeah, but it didn't get in my head. You know, I had to get here. But when I sowed that money that belonged to him, something happened to me. Like, I would go to the grocery, I still go to the grocery store, and I still get deals. I get so many deals. <laughs> it's like, if I need whatever, it's like on special. And I don't know how else to explain it, but so tithing for me has become like a treasure hunt for me. Because I go, what are you going to do for me today? <laughs> if I go to get gas, I'm going, how far is this gas going to let go for me? And so we need to think like that that God likes us to think like that. And for maybe it just happened because I was a single mom and he worked that way with me, I don't know. But um, so tithing for me is really important. Offering then becomes a whole different matter. But tithing covers you. It's your protection. And in this day, when they're thinking about bombing things, remember, 
10,000 may fall at your right hand, but it shall not touch your dwelling. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> For he's given you charge over. So he's given your angels charge over your dwelling place. You don't have to worry. So, um, oh, well, yeah. So we should, oh, yeah, there we go. So maybe you guys can read this out loud for me because I probably, go ahead. Because I am Father, and the heaven are open to me, and God is out of my sight. I am blessed financially, and receive the blessing that I cannot continue. Hallelujah. I choose to see it cheerfully, bountifully, knowing that I will be God makes me the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. The blessings of God are chasing me and overtake me. I am believing in God and his blessings increase in the field. And I'm just going to add to it because we're going to have to believe for it, people. Alberta, just to throw a little bit of politics for just two seconds, <laughs> wants to separate CPP from the rest of Canada. Don't think it's not going to affect your pensions. So I'm just saying, we have to know how to stand and believe for finances. And some of us have never done it. Do you know what I'm saying? Some of us have never had to believe for that because they've always had it. <laughs> but there's going to come a day, I believe, that we're going to have to stand on the promises and trust the Lord. That he brings, when he brings groceries to your house, it's not from Sarkis Sam's or from the Dollarama. It's the best groceries in the grocery bags. <laughs> so we never have to worry or fret. Anyway, praise the Lord. Okay, so Jamin will be here next week. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> you know that um, one of those songs, or worship songs, they uh, were saying about <clears throat> who were operating in the overflow. Hallelujah. How many believe that they're operating in the overflow? Amen. Is, there, is there many? You know, it's, it's interesting that we can get so built up that really the enemy just can't touch us. Yes. You know, because our confession is always strong. And, and we need to, right now especially, we need to keep our confession strong because there's lots happening. And the media has a way of twisting everything. In fact, I don't even listen to really secular media. I, I, a bunch to me is garbage. It is just all twisted. Uh, you know, it's demonic because the devil was called the father of lies. And that's what they are. They're after their father, the devil. Because he was the father of lies. He was that from the beginning. And you know what? Those that are listening and following him and I know that's what they're doing. They're, they're trying to continue to put fear in the people. You know, they, nothing, is, nothing that they're saying is real and genuine. You know, it doesn't matter what we talk about. School systems are messed up. M you know, right now the money's messed up. They don't know what to do. They're hiding so much stuff on you. You know, the governments are pumping so much money into radical uh, groups. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, what could we do if we had, you know, $10 trillion to play with? They just, they just keep the printing press going. Run it, run it, run it, run it, run it. I would love to give $10 trillion to the gospel. But they're just throwing it all over the place, and, and I don't even know if they know where it's all going. It's, it's so hid, and it's funneling through so many banks and companies and then all of a sudden it winds up in certain people's pockets in their bank account. And they are loaded. And now they're so hooked on this deal, they don't know how to stop. And they're getting caught. See, God's now exposing it all. And you're seeing it clearly. 
I just don't understand how come our justice system, even you know, in some of our nations, how come it doesn't put these people away? You know? I mean, you know, the, the firing squad wouldn't be just enough for what they're doing. They're just messing up. And if you get in the way, they're not, they have no problem killing you. If you get in our way and, you know, and you're in politics and if you don't do what we say, either they boot you out or they just, you know, they take you out. And it's not out to supper. You know? <clears throat> you know, I hear Justin Jesse Duplantis because I hear him talk and I, I know that it's kind of funny because, you know, he kind of understands mafia stuff. And, and, you know, he says where he come from, he says, you know, if we want to get rid of a person, then they do, you know, and they, they got all these crocodiles. And he says, you know, we just get rid of people. <laughs> we, we know how to do it. <laughs> but I know he's not talking about him. He's just talking about people that are living in his area. You know, they, they just know how to deal with uh, people that, you know, they, they, that's right. They want to they wanna get rid of them. They don't want to do it. Anyway. <clears throat> You know, I really, um, I really feel that right now. Uh, I just wanna, before I start, I just wanna, I wanna pray for Israel. But there's, there's just some things I don't know in my own understanding how to pray accurate for them. I know it's, you know, we're all watching. Maybe not all of us, but most of us. And I see so much going on. I'm thinking, God, I don't know if I know how to pray accurately for some things that need to be accomplished, need to be done. But I know you've given us a prayer method. It's the most powerful truth, powerful method. And uh, you know something, I, I welcome people that are watching <laughs> on video because you know some people do, uh, they're watching us. I, I was shocked actually because um, I was looking back on uh, Gary Crowell um, when he was teaching in that. In one of our sessions, there were 75 people that viewed it. And I thought, you know, it's getting out there. You know, we haven't been really up for very long, but I'm thinking there some had 52 views, some had 51, I think, views, and one had 70 some. I thought, you know, something people are looking. People are looking, people are hungry, people are watching, and that. But anyway, I would just want to pray in tongues for a little, just a little bit for Israel, because I just know there's some things that we need to, to touch and attack in the spirit realm. And this is the most powerful method. When you know not how to pray as you ought, the Holy Spirit helps you with groanings which cannot be uttered. You know, and I know that God gave that to the church. I am shocked how much of the body of Christ is ignorant concerning this area. It just shocks me because I don't know how you can, as a believer, stand strong and continue to go forth with everything that happens, the storms, trials, and problems, and yet you don't know how to pray in tongues. And you don't know how to keep strong in, in that realm of the spirit. But anyway, let's just take a few minutes, okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ini pergamanu kuta, ini matala karyabuka, mandili krumandu rapatani, jangli prus burun kemanyate, rombre ambo toko no andi estika, rambani kuranti, rono brabarinani, ina kurabata yanandi, rono sung romantiki na takayatu, mindre putamatani ataka, nandian kuruman barati. Mandiam Broto Goramama Kianata, in a Broto Kono, in a Pramaraki Karamotani, in a Larabakana, Nudu Kuni, Chabaratuna, in a Kurani, in a Prabatu, in a Bramayan Urukamian Rakayantarati, in a Prabatu Kuno, in a yes, Father, expose it. Expose, Father, those things, Lord. Expose those things, Father, that were hidden. Lord, the enemy is coming. The enemy is coming against Israel. You said, Father, you said you would expose them. You said you would take and remove them. 
Father, I thank you that they're covering. Your supernatural covering is on those military men and women in Israel as they go forth. Lord, your hand of protection, Lord God, angels will be released in their behalf. Your, your divine protection, Michael the archangel that's over Israel, he will watch over them in this hour. There will be no country that will touch them. There will be no country, Lord, that can cause them to be destroyed or to wipe them out. When the dust settles, Father, I just thank you that they'll gain their land back. They'll get back that which you promised them to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You'll give them back their land. You'll give them back that which you promised them. And Father, we stand with them as a church, as a Canadian. Lord God, we stand with Israel. We stand with them. We bless them, Father. We bless them. We bless them. We bless them. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we're not going to really fully understand, even in a short span of time praying in the Holy Ghost, you won't fully see what you've accomplished and what you gave the Holy Ghost the right to do. See, he, when we're praying in tongues, and I always want to bring this up because I, I know always you, 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 know, you, you run into people, they don't fully understand it. But you're praying perfect yeah. prayer. It's the Holy Ghost that's praying through you. Yeah. You know, I wish churches and leaders would understand that. It's the Holy Ghost in you praying through you. His voice is your voice. Yeah. You, if you don't speak it out, he can't. He's waiting for you. You speak in tongues, you speak that supernatural, when you do, God now has a voice. Because what happened, he couldn't, the Old Testament you see over and over again, he would tell a prophet, stand up and face the north, and he says, and say what I tell you to say. And they would say it. And they wouldn't sometimes have a probably an understanding of why am I saying this? But you know what? He said it because he had to say it. So the thousand years from now, or for 500 years from that point, something was going to happen. See, Jesus could not get in the earth if, if somebody wouldn't have prophesied his coming. He couldn't just come. God had to speak to somebody, and as he spoke to them, they spoke it out. They prophesied it forth of his coming. That's why I'm so, you know, I can't understand. How did Israel miss it? How did the Jewish people miss it? He came. He was born in a virgin. Everything they said happened. They knew the scriptures and yet they missed it. See, God's speaking about Israel and he's telling what's going to happen with Israel in the day and age we really live in. It was prophesied years ago, and it's coming back up again. The lies that they're doing in nations to try to try to destroy Israel, try to say they're you know they need to be abolished, they need to be wiped out. All these lies are coming because why? There was a spirit back then. Thousands of years ago, there was a spirit that was on those people and the Philistines came against Israel and kept on trying to wipe them out and take them out. And that same spirit that was on them Philistines down in Gaza is where those Philistines were. That's where they lived. The land of Canaan. And David won one victory over Goliath there. And right now we're going to see supernaturally, we're going to win victory there once again. Amen. They're going to take down the strong man. Yes. See, Islam's got a big mouth. Yeah, they're blabbing and blabbing. But God is going to shut them up. And he's going to shut them down. It's going to happen. You know, I, I uh, 
got a video, and I'm going to take a, just a few minutes here. Kim Clement shared something in 2014. And he was saying, he was talking about this. He was talking about Russia. He was talking about Iran. He was talking about Israel. I think there was one more. There's, I think, four that he was talking about. But he was sharing and he was prophesying about how God was going to deal with these nations. Yes. Bring it up. The nations are raging. Not against a nation or even nations, but against the Lord God of Israel. Israel is forever. My people have always found a way of escape. speak to the leaders that are standing in my way. Yes, 
You know, you wonder how could somebody, 2014, he's saying these, th these words, and this is a battle right now, and these are all the ones involved. Just the other day, or just this morning, China now has come in with three warships. So what are they doing? You know? This thing is this thing is getting uh, really interesting, you know. Now the body of Christ, you know, we're protected. You know, God says that we're not only conquerors. He says you're more than conquerors. He says you're more than victorious and you're winners. For us as believers, we are protected. You know, even though, and I'll say. And, uh, you know, and again, I'm not 100% sure. I know in, Mecca, in uh, where is it, um, East India right now, there's a bloodbath with Christians. Yeah. They're killing, they're not even talking about this in the news, but they're killing Christians and they're burning churches down by the bucket load. Yeah. But it's not getting covered. It's not being shared. And it isn't because you're a Christian. They don't care about you. They don't care about Israelis. You know, if you're, if you're a Jew, they don't care about you. They want your annihilation. And we're, we're seeing more and more in our day that they could care less about Christians. Your leaders, they don't care. Right. You're, you're an irritation to them. It's like last week when I was talking about the Philistines. What did it say uh, about the Philistines and in the children of Israel? It says they were a, a needle in their eye and a thorn in their side. You're an irritation. Yeah. If we can get rid of you, Get rid of you. But they can't. Because God Almighty has already prophesied or used his prophets to speak. He used his church to speak. And they're yet speaking. They're saying there's what things are going to happen. I don't believe we're that far down the road. You know, I mean, some, some of you are saved longer than I am, 47 years. But you know something, we're, really, I'm, we're getting really close now. Really close. We don't we don't have a lot of a lot of years. So that means that our work that we have to do, we gotta do it quickly. Quickly. But you know something, even in that area, God, what he will do is he will help us do what we need to do. I mean there's a church that's on fire and hungry. And there's another part of the church that's the foolish virgins that are weak and they're playing games and they're doing stuff and, and they're not realizing. The day and hour you live in is a, is a very, very interesting time and hour. When I look at it, I'm thinking, I, I'm glad I was born in this time and hour. I got to admit, in all the years I've been saved, I, I, I haven't really went through many storms at all. But one thing I have done is I kept the word always in my mouth. The word of God and confessions, I continually made confessions that God, you are my protector. I thank you that the Holy Ghost dwells on the inside, that I'm alive and I'll pray in the spirit every day. I pray in tongues. I never miss a day. I take communion every day for the last three, four years. Maybe miss the odd day. I do everything I know to do to keep me up and strong. But I want the people of God also to be strong, to stand strong in this hour. And we will. We will. As we stand together, we'll stand strong. I, I put some things together and I got always enough for like six hours and I only got, I only get one. Hallelujah. So how do you, you know, it's, it's a miracle to get through this. That's why I don't. <laughs> that miracle doesn't happen. Hallelujah. I just want to read some things. I, 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 there was a few people 
that I was listening to, and I, I wrote some things down that they were saying. One was Tommy, or, or, or how would you spell last name? Tommy. Tommy. And uh, some people may know him. He's a prophet. And um, I have some things that I wrote down, but I will start off with this. What does Palestine, Palestine mean? And this came from a Jew. He said the pa Palestine, Palestine means the land of the Philistines. He said the Romans called it Palestina or Philistine. God loves all people, but it is clear that God gave the land to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and to their children and to the children of Israel. The word Palestina is about a war against the will of God and the violation of what God promised. The Gaza Strip is where the Philistines live. Or the, the yeah, the Philistines live. Gaz, the Gaza Strip was the headquarters of the enemy like it was even today. So way back, you got that uh, one photo, um, Randy, I, I give uh, of, uh, Oh, that's it there. Okay. Yeah, that would be that'd be good because you can see Gaza Strip there, that blue, and that's where that's where um, I think I had another one, and actually it said on it that that was um, Canaan. Oh, there's another one of different places. Gaza, you can see that Ashkelon and that. So some of these places, and as we, I read, it'll it'll mention some of them, but it says I, I put down. Notice what. What we are witnessing in the news is part of an ancient war. What we are witnessing is the return of an ancient war. The Philistines planned, plotted, and destroyed the children, children of Israel back in ancient times. Notice again the Palestinians and Hamas, the terrorist group, are trying to destroy the Israelites. They took hostages, they killed Israelites in their beds, and they killed babies. This was a replay of an ancient war, and most of them did not even understand this. So, so a lot of people that are in these um, groups today, you know, when they're out, out in their groups yeah, and, they're, and they're protesting, they don't even know what they're protesting. Right. See, they don't, most people don't know the history right. behind what's going on. They just see right now for face value, this happened and this happened. And now that, you know, after what is it, almost 20 days now, they, they're already forgetting about what happened to the, the, the Jews and what they did. They're already looking at, well, look what the Jews did to the city. They bombed and they bombed this city, and people are dying in there. But put the video up there of, of uh, the one that's in like all the red, where all those dots are. There's the military. See all those dots? This is a military man, and and Israel is. It's interesting. Israel is is. I'm telling you, they are sharp. They are sharp. Every bomb that goes off from the enemy, they take photos of it. All those spots is where their, their missiles and bombs blew up on them. <laughs> they lit it and it blew up on them, and they blew their own people up. Right. But they blame Israel. <laughs> they said, well, they just shot a bomb in here and it blew up. And, and no, they blew themselves up. 550 different missiles blew, shot and blew up. 550. I mean, I'm thinking when they shoot thousands of bombs at, at Israel, very, very few are getting in. And I'm thinking, but they're blowing their people, they're blowing them up left and right. Because they're homemade bombs. They're making these things in, in garages and in some of the buildings they have. And, they're, and the funding for all this stuff comes from different nations. Iran was the biggest. Now, I don't know, I, I have no idea whether or not this is going to happen, but I'm just going to say it. I, I believe Israel is going to nuke Iran. I believe they're going to use a bomb and they're going to blow them up. 
because they know where all the funding coming from and they know that they got some missiles too. And I think they're right now on the verge. If they don't have a, a nuclear missile, they might have. But Israel knows they'll have to do the first strike. That's right. And I'm thinking we're getting pretty close. China coming in here now, I don't know. And then Russia, Russia's not saying much, but they're involved. They got more funding of money. You know, the money that was going into Ukraine, it's coming over into these terrorist groups. Yeah. The money that was going uh, Israel or, or Iran, Iraq, all the funding, all that funding, all that money, the United States, yeah. and I and I can't even I can't even believe that 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 the United States. Well, I can believe that the leader that's in there right now, you know, I mean he's he's only a, a pawn, he's only a a voice box, you know. Good old President Obama's behind him. And he's pulling the strings. That's right. And I know that now he's yapping a little bit more. I see him coming up more into the fruition in videos. And I see Michelle wants to be the president. Yeah. I wonder how that's going to work. They're going to wiggle, they're going to wiggle their way in. Somehow they're going to try to finagle their way in. And they're keeping Trump in court to keep him shut up. Yeah. But you know something? One of the big things that Trump did, and I, and I just can't thank him enough. <laughs> yeah. He moved, he moved uh, what was it, the building into Jerusalem? Yeah. Their, their embassy? Yeah. Their em and I thought, Trump, you, you are one guy that isn't all mouth. Yeah. All other leaders come in and say they were going to do this and that and the other thing. They didn't do nothing. Trump, he actually did what he said. And they're afraid of him. And they need to be. And I believe God's hands on the man. And I don't know where, I don't even know because, you know, like I say, I, I couldn't prophesy it because I, I don't know. Uh, I would I tell you, I'd love to see him get back in. I, I'd love to see him because I, he's a fighter. He knows how to fight. He knows how to build. He's been in all these nations and he's talked to these leaders. They know. They know. Glory to God. But let's, let's go on here. I said, notice again the Palestinians and Hamas, the terrorist group, are trying to destroy the Israelites. They took hostages. Okay, I read that. It was, a, it was a replay of an ancient war, and most of them did not even under, don't even understand it. Again, in ancient times, when the Philistines won a war over the children of Israel, they would parade and worship in their victory. And what are they doing today? Yeah. See, when they kill all those people, you know, go into bedrooms and they just shot people in the back, shot them up, you know, killed, killed many, many, took hostages. What, what did they do all over in Gaza? See, they were up, their hands were raised, they were parading, they were shouting. They, 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 they love to see that. They want the eradication of the Israelis. But unlike today, Muslims and the Palestinians prayed their victory in the brutal killing of the, they, they were parading, parading in the brutal killing of the innocent and the weakening of the Israeli people. Did they do this intentionally or was it that they were unaware of the past. See, people do things, but they don't know the things they're doing. When you look in history, you see they've done the same thing. It's just, it's just the same thing that repeats itself, because why? Because this is just not a natural fight. It's a supernatural fight. You have demonic spirits that are operating, and they're coming, they're coming again up in fruition, and they're using people to do the exact same thing. It's those same demon spirits. When King David heard that King Saul and his, and his son Jonathan was killed in battle, King David said this. He's, it's in the word. He says, tell it not in Gath. Tell it not in Gath. One of the Philistine cities, that, that was one of the Philistine cities in, in Gaza. And, and he said, tell it not in the streets of Ashkelon. That was another city in, in Gaza. 
He said, or, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice their daughters of the uncircumcised will celebrate. So he was saying, David was saying, don't tell them because if you tell them, they'll go back and then there'll be a celebration of the fact that you killed Saul and you killed Jonathan. Don't, don't let them know so that they won't do that. David's pretty smart. 1 Samuel 17, 26 in the King James Version says this. It says, And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the men that kill this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David made a mention of something, and I, I don't think people sometimes even realize it. The Philistines were uncircumcised. They didn't, they didn't get circumcised. But the children of Israel did because it was covenant. They had to, they had to circumcise themselves because they, God actually told Moses and then he told Abraham, circumcise your, your, your children. Because you, I want that to be done so that you'll come into covenant with me. And then when they came into covenant with them, now God will back them up. God will fight their battle and fight their war. But he made that statement. He made, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Because he knew he didn't have a covenant with God. Who is he that he would defy the armies of the living God? See, who are these people today in Gaza? Who are these people in Egypt? Who are these one in Lebanon? You know, right up along the border, Syria, yeah. Jordan. Who are these people that they would come against the living God? Right. You're going to come and you're going to destroy our pe my people? I've just gathered my people from all over the globe. Right. I gave them a land. What was it, 1948? Yeah. Show, show that picture. I got a lot of pictures today. I got a picture and it'll, it'll, just show, it'll show the military, but it'll show angels. And they actually seen this. When they were fighting that battle and they won, there were angels that came down and, and the enemy was so scared that they just got out of their, their, their war material and left. And actually... As, as I was reading, I, I found out that the, the Israel only had three tanks. The enemy had hundreds. And those angels came in. Now, I'm saying that to say this. God supernaturally is going to do things, and it's going to be so supernatural, they'll get it on film. They'll see it because the hand of God is still on his people. He has never changed that land belongs to them, and some of them are still on land, like Jordan, and different, they're on their land. They yeah. belongs to Israel. Right. And when the smoke, you know, when it all settles, yeah. their borders, they'll have, they'll have more land, mm -hmm. their borders will be bigger, mm -hmm. and they'll have what belongs to them, yeah. because God promised it to them. And God is not for, you know, I know that there's no nation and there's no people that are perfect. We're not perfect. They're not perfect. But what God did say is I, he promised them that land. And God now is going to bring the promise to pass. Now, and now, I tell you, now is the time. They cannot back off. I don't care what they, people and nations and, and, you know, universities, the kids can pick it all they want or get in groups and scream all they want. Israel cannot back off. They need to go in and they need to do, you know, do due do, do diligence. Let, let's just finish this thing. We're done playing games. We're done. You, a thorn in our side. We're going we're gonna to now take you out. Shock. He's gonna, he's gonna, they're going to do it. We're going to see. I, like I said, I don't know. This is building up because Russia, I know they're involved. China's coming in. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? Yeah. 
Shana, what are you up to? The United States got two carriers, you know, two, two air, aircraft carriers and, and then maybe other ships now coming in. I think they said two, what was it, two, 200? Was it 200,000? 200,000 troops? How, how many were coming in from the U.S.? Did anybody hear? I thought there was, or maybe it was 2,000. 2,000 troops were going to be, they're already, already deployed, they're coming to help. But you know something, I still don't believe Biden. I, I, I still, he's two-faced. He says something, but he says what he's told to say. Sometimes he falls asleep halfway through what he's supposed to say. You know, this is the, this is the wildest, I, I mean, I can't believe it. And then we got, a, we got some yo-yo of a leader too, I'm telling you, it's like Lord Jesus. I saw him standing in a mosque the other day you know, and like a little, like a, like a little kid, He's, you know, and they're, they're talking, I'm thinking on myself, you know, you know, no more belonging there in the man in the moon. And don't, and the thing is, is that you're going to think, they're going to think you're behind them and then all, everything's going to all blow up. And then all of a sudden it's like, but you know, he's on his way out. He's on his way out. Uh, I wish I could say that was a prophecy. <laughs> remove them, remove them. Hallelujah. But anyway, Glory to God. Why did David call Goliath an unstrong? Okay, I, 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 I explained it, but I already shared a lot about that. Um, I probably said it before I, I read it, but um, the past that is hidden, okay, notice God seeing everything, but, the, but then reveals and uncovers the hidden mysteries as we dissect the word so in the body of christ see when we get in the word the mysteries that are hid the spirit of god begins to open them things up and shows you right. and the things that that were were covered over and the things that maybe you you're wondering what about this he uncovers it so you can see it mm -hmm. see god said in his word he said when when uh, when things begin to happen when they begin to come forward he says i i reveal or i prophesy I share things ahead of time so that you're going to know. So you're going to know the events that are coming. I'll reveal them to my people. I'll reveal them to my children. You're not going to be left unknowing of what's going to happen. We're not. Right. Things are, are really building up. Glory to God. I, I better keep reading here because I want to read some of what Tommy had to say. <clears throat> Some of the same spirits that operated through many nations and people have raised its satanic head again, causing radical people to come against God's people, God's promises, and God's land. Because we are witnesses or witnessing an, uh, a natural battle to defeat the enemy using natural weapons, we understand that there is supernatural weapons that also are to be, are, are to be used which are prayer, intercession, fasting, God's word, and praying in the Holy Ghost. See, those are weapons that we can use to destroy the enemy. Tommy says this. He's a prophet. I just want to let you know, you know, if some people don't know who he is. And he said this. He said, I hear the Lord say, the sleeper cells of the nations are being activated. I look and the armies in the mountains of Afghanistan have moved into the mountains of the United States of America. Tony said the Lord wants me to unmask Hamas. Hamas is a, um, is a patsy. Hamas is not Hamas. Hamas is actually Iran. We will see news that Iran funded the attack on Israel. That's already come out. Tommy said, and he said this a long time ago. This wasn't just recently because he was on Sid Roth and I think it was years ago he had prophesied it, but he was just, him and Sid Roth were talking about this. We will see Biden try to cover his tracks because of an Iranian nuclear program and money that was given to him. Isn't that interesting? They will give all this big money to different nations but somehow money goes around and right back in their bank account is like, 
um, on Lord Jesus. And, and it's coming out because they, they, they do have some of the checks. I just saw one, uh, one of the ladies uh, the other day um, that, that actually they were bringing, the, bringing Biden to court and she had a check and she showed it and her brother wrote this check out brother, to him. His brother. Yeah, Biden's brother yeah. wrote the check to him. <laughs> it was, a, it was quite, a, quite a chunk of money. So it's, it's like, it's, it's all coming out now. There was an Iranian, uh, an Iranian prisoner sweep of $6 billion, but it was all exposed after Hamas attacked Israel. The money was to be given to humanity, hum, human, humanitarian aid. So that's where it actually that money was to, to go, but they actually unfroze it and then they started drawing on it. But the money was being used in bomb technology and military weapons. There is many things that America is doing with Iran that they do not want you to know about. But this lying spirit is behind the nation and governments. Proverbs 6, verse 16 and 19, it says this, The Lord hates these seven things. Eyes that show pride, tongue that tells lies, hands that kill innocent people, hearts that plan evil things to do, and feet that run to do evil. Witnesses in court who tell lies, and everyone who causes family members to fight. Interesting. All of that stuff is definitely happening. Behind the scene, Hidden phone calls, meetings, gatherings, leaders planning schemes, plots, collusions. Uh, but through prayer and intercession, God uncovers, exposes, unveils, and brings it to the light. Every hidden thing and every dark thing, evil and wicked thing, shall be uncovered. Mark 4, verse 22 says, For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was there anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. God's going to expose it. Luke 8, 17 says, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, and nothing, or neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Job 12 and 23 says this, He increaseth the nations and destroy them. He enlargeth nations and strengthen, strengthens them again. And that's what he did with Israel. Israel one time was scattered all over. He brought them back to a nation. He called them back and they're being strengthened. And I believe this, there is no power out there that is powerful as, as Israel. They got weapons that they haven't. I, I don't know if many of you have seen some of the latest stuff they have. They have some weapons that are unbelievable. And I don't think any nation has some of this technology. They, they, are, they, have, they have a lot of smarts. <laughs> they are geniuses in every area. You know, they can grow a desert or they can grow fruit and that in a desert and plants and, and they've been shipping them around the world, and, and it started in a desert. They're money masters because I think, think there's the, one of the one of the the most wealthiest people or families in the earth today are are Jews. I was reading an article, and they say that family owns, and I forget what it was, three hundred trillion dollars. Three hundred one family, three hundred trillion dollars. So some people that have that kind of money can pull strings and they can do things and they can, you know, just like, just like Trudeau's doing with us, like, like shut all the news media down, shut all communication down so nobody can talk. You know, if you got enough money or you got enough power, you can do these things. But it, it, it's, it's stopping. It's coming, it's coming to an end. Hallelujah. Like Nick said, but God. God... I'm telling you, God will fight. He's going to fight our battle. Yes. Glory to God. I'm just wondering, is there anything else, Lord, you want me to give here? Glory to God. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. That's what Gene Bailey said. All them groups tried to unite in Israel. They're all gone? They're all gone. They're all gone. Ancient Egypt, Philistines, Assyrians, the Babylonians, ancient Greeks, the Romans, Crusaders, Nazis, Hamas. Um, the, all of these are all these groups are all gone. Oh yeah, where I see it at the very bottom. He's got working mm -hmm. on it. Uh, he's he's doing he's doing a good job, but like you like you say, the uh, right now the the um, the Hamas. Uh, there's another group that actually they're getting together. Hezbollah. Hezbollah. Yeah, yeah. They're they're coming in with a great a great army to help them out over in, over in Lebanon and that. But thank you. But you know something? This is really getting interesting, and, uh, you know, for us. You know, we're a long ways from all the action. But you know something? In your prayer room, you can be right, right in the middle of the action. Right in the middle of what's going on. God can show you and can have you say and pray, pray out things. And that's why I say I am so thankful. I'm so thankful for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm so thankful that he gave me a, a way of praying that when I don't know what to pray for and how to pray for it accurately. You know, I can, I, every, every one of us can lift up something and pray in, our, in, our, in the natural realm and we can share some, some prayer about it. We can say some things about it. But say, can I get down into really the fine detail of God... How are you going to fix this? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, how, are we gonna, how, how am I going to fix this operation somebody's going to have? You know, that seems so complicated. You know, I remember when a kid came up to me, and I, I know I've shared this before, but a young boy came up to me when I used to go to WCF, and, he, and his parents actually told me that the doctors gave him up. They said that we, don't, we have no idea what you got, and uh, two years suffering. And, and he was getting weaker and weaker, and he, he didn't know, am I going to live or die? They had no answers. So he just said, can you pray for my, my boy? And I asked him, where is he? He goes, he's, he's in the church. I said, well, go grab him and bring him. And we did, and I prayed for him. And the moment I laid hands on him, he fell out in the power of God. And I knelt down and just continued for a while, and then I kind of woke him up. And if I remember now, his name was Chris. And, and, I, and I started talking to him a little bit and that, and I wanted him to, you know, be faithful in the church. Come in here and be faithful because he wasn't. But that week, he got totally healed. It was, it was from Sunday. I prayed from Sunday and Wednesday. He was in the workout room and he was working out because he used to work out. So he went back to the facility he was at and he was working out. And his dad called me and told me. And I, I said, well, give me his number. And he gave me his number. I called him up. And I said, hey, Chris, I says, how, how things? And he goes, you're not going to believe this. I says, well, what's going on? He goes, I got all my strength back. He says, I was Jonas, I'm, I'm, I'm back, my, all, all that left. He says, my strength back, and I was just at the weight room. I says, well, praise the Lord. So we talked for a little while and that, and then after I, I kind of kept in touch with him until me and Nick and uh, Pastor Bernie went to Indonesia. But I kept in touch with him and that, and it was about maybe a month or two, and he was still going, doing good, and then we took off, and, and then that was it. I didn't talk to him, haven't talked to him since. But you know something? I like to find out that when things are genuine, when we pray for people and they get healed, that they stay healed. Amen. They stay healed. Amen. Because you know what? I know the enemy. I know his schemes. I know his game. He'll whisper in your ear and say, well, you know what? Uh, you know, and he'll send some symptoms back just to see what you're going to say. What are you going to say? Well, I, you know, I thought God healed me, but I guess he didn't. And then all of a sudden you sign to it and it all comes back. No, you have to continue to say, Father, when hands were laid upon me, the healing power of God went in, and that power is working now, causing a healing and a cure. And Father, I thank you that I'm healed. No matter whether sign or, or symptoms show up or not, you just keep saying what you believe. What do I believe? I believe for God. When they laid hands on me, the power went in, and that power is present, working now, causing a healing and a cure. And I thank you that I'm healed. 
That's been my confession for 47 years. Yeah. Anytime symptoms try to come, devil, no, 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 you don't. I know my body like you know your body. If something comes, I know it, and I'm on it. Man, I'm on it like a, a, a cat on a mouse. You, you ain't, you, you know, you're done. You're done. Devil, in Jesus' name, I break your power. Every symptom I command, every symptom leave my body. In Jesus' name, Jesus said, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. I'm laying hands on myself. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for the recover. I thank you that every symptom is leaving my body. In Jesus' name, and every, it leaves. Everything goes. But you know what? The devil will be stupid not to try once in a while just to see where you're at. He'll try to bring something, storm, something, just to find out what you're gonna, what's going to come out of your mouth. What are you going to say? See, Kenneth Hagin, some people thought that he wrote Mark uh, 23 or 11, 23, and 24. He faked that because he said it so much. You know, they almost thought it came from him. But no, this is really in the word. Whosoever shall say unto that mountain. You know, we have to say to every storm and every mountain. You speak to it. If you speak to it, them mountains and them storms will go. Like it did for when Jesus stood up in the Sea of Galilee and there was a literal storm that shook, you know, I mean, uh, the disciples, they were scared. And these guys are fishermen. So I don't know how we would be. We would be pretty, it would be not good. You know, I might be cleaning my uh, pants. But, uh, you know, it, it, would be, it would be bad, you know. But you know something? Jesus just got up and he spoke to it. Be calm, be calm. See, be calm in Jesus, and no, he didn't say in Jesus' name, but he just said be calm. He could have said that in my name. <laughs> listen to me, listen to me. But anyway, he just spoke to it, and it, and, it, and it immediately stopped. <clears throat> but you know something that should be a revelation for the disciples, like it should be a revelation to us. You know, Jesus made, made mention about the, the, the centurion that was needing prayer for his servant. And when he said, he, you know, he said, and that was so unusual, but he said it. He said, Jesus, you know, if you'll just say the word, he says, I know my servant will be healed. Just say the word. Man, there's a, there's a message in there. <laughs> You could teach. You could teach a couple of <laughs> some messages just on that. Yeah. The, the word, the word, the word. Just say the word, and I know my servant will be healed. Just say the word. He did, and his servant was healed. And an amazing thing. I mean, there's so much in there. You know, he says, "You know, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof." And he wasn't. He wasn't. He was a Roman. Didn't belong to the covenant. I'm not worthy. But but if you say the word, I know my servant will be healed. Because he was, a, he was a military man and he understood authority and he understood the authority that Jesus had. And if we as believers understand the authority that Jesus has given to you, I'm telling you, you will be a different person. You will be a different person. Nothing, 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 nothing can take you out until you just decide you want to go home. You know, and there's been a few preachers I knew that he just said, you know what, uh, I'm done my race and I, I just want to go home, sat down in a rocking chair and went out. Yeah. Wow. I'm telling you, I'm thinking, yeah, you can do that. If you, want, if you want 100 years, take it. If you want 105 years, take it. If you want 90 years, take it. Is there anybody over 90 here? <laughs> Not yet. We can make it. We can, we can make it. You know, your job is not done till it's done. Right. Till he said, come on home. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not going home. I'm not going home too quick. I, I know there's a fight, and I want to I wanna fight this fight. Yeah. I want to give everything I got. <clears throat> My wife gets upset because she said, honey, you don't sleep enough, and you're down in the basement way too much. Because that's where my study is, and I just, I'm in hours and hours and hours. I'm just praying and talking, and, and, and it's good. It's, it's good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We got a. Jesus said before he left this earth, 
You're sitting on a hill looking over Jerusalem. And he said, Baruch Abba, Hashem Adonai, I will not return again until you say, welcome is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you know, it's amazing. Every word that God said shall come to pass. See, every word. Yes. Nothing, nothing is done. See, when people say, well, you know, God missed it. No, 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 no. No, God never missed it. It's that you don't understand it. Some things are not always understood just as you read because there's, there's things that God has put in his word that are almost like they're hidden. But then as you read, you go, oh, my, that's what he was talking about. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, anyway, glory to God. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Glory to God. <clears throat> you know, there are people that are watching too, um, and I'm noticing that we're seeing more people come online to see uh, and hear what we're, we're sharing. But there are some people out there that are unsaved. They don't know Jesus. And uh, I, really, I really desire that they would know him. Some of you are battling. You know, some of you are battling with drugs, you're battling with alcohol, you're battling just in your family. Some people are going through divorces, some people are just got such big storms, they do not know how to get through. But the ingredient you need to know is this, it's Jesus. Everything is all about Jesus. See, all the Old Testament was talking about the Messiah coming, and then when the Messiah came, in the New Testament, he gave us his church, his believers, he gave us power and authority. And it's, 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 it's wonderful. It's, it's, it's wonderful. I was a mess. Many of us were messes that he fixed. He didn't need any help. He didn't say go somewhere and try to get some help to fix yourself. And then when you get kind of better, come and see me. He just said, just come as you are. And that's what I want people to know. If you're out there, come as you are. Just pray with me. I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask Jesus in. I want you to ask Jesus in right where you're at to help you. Because I know you're in a mess. And you don't know which way to turn. Turn to him. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. I repent of my sin. I repent of the things that I'm doing and the things that I'm into. I ask Jesus that I would make you the Lord over my life. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I repent now and turn from all of my sin and wicked ways. Jesus, help me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you right now. Hallelujah. I know some people watching too were watching and they noticed that we were praying in tongues in the very beginning and they're going, I don't understand that. But that's the power of God and I want those that have received Jesus, if you're watching and you don't, never received this, it's very simple. It's so easy. I just can we can walk our way right into this. Say this, say Jesus, I thank you that you are the baptizer of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In the upper room, you came and said they're all filled to overflowing with the Spirit of God. You said that they begin to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. So by faith right now, I begin to speak and just begin to speak because it's down, it's, you're going to find it down in your belly. There's going to be some words and sounds that are going to come up and just speak them out. <speaking in Hebrew> Ishanandru to kum yambarada ne katala burongo. 
Speak so that you can hear it with your own ears. And then you'll believe it when you hear it. They, it says, they begin to speak. So begin to speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you did that and you heard yourself, the Bible says that you're now filled with the Holy Ghost. Do it every day. Every day practice. Spend a little bit of time. Just pray in tongues. There's material that you can get that's on the subject. There are different leaders, different ministers out there that talk about it. Scan the, the internet and find somebody that's taught, that's taught on this subject and then just listen to the information they give. There's a book that Kenneth Hagin has that says, Why Tongues? And he has another book that says that is called Seven Steps on How to Receive the Holy Ghost. There would be a couple books that would be good if you want. Go to Kenneth Hagin Ministries and order the book. They're just little mini books. They're a couple of dollars, probably about three bucks. But it'd be a, such a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Well, that's it. Glory to God. Glory to God.